I'm glad and delighted to be here in this workshop. And it's a pleasure for Saudi Aramco to be presented here. Uh, our presentation today is about a brief survey, a quick brief survey, where open source is utilized in Saudi Aramco. <coughs> so the agenda of this presentation, first I will introduce Saudi Aramco. I have my colleague yesterday presented it, but I'll just introduce it a little bit very quickly. Justifications. Why Saudi Aramco is using open source? Is it the mindset or, should, or was it enforced on us to use open source? Then we overview quickly areas where we are use, utilizing open source. The special case is the HPC stack, the high performance computing software stack. There is actually one misconception when you look at the media and you look at the publications when it comes to open source. Some people say open source for everything. But what we mean by open source here, we mean software. The source code, basically, the open source is basically what we mean is the, the, uh, the source code itself and the products, uh, uh, the resultant product of this source code. And last but not least, we uh, discuss some challenges as we have faced it in Saudi Aramco. <clears throat> so, uh, I know that most of the audience here is from Saudi, and Saudi Aramco is not uh, vague for them. But if I want to summarize what is Saudi Aramco in one word, it is large. And what I mean by large, it is humongous. It's basically, it has large oil fields, large reservoirs. It's one of the largest national oil corporations. And this is a challenge, because I have to satisfy a large number of users. I have to solve not an average problem. I have to solve an extreme technical problem, and it would require maybe extreme financial solution, extreme support. <coughs> so this is Saudi Aramco. So who am I? And who is the team that I present? I'm just a drop in Saudi Aramco. Saudi Aramco has more than 50,000 employees. I am just one of them. Our team is basically a diverse team. We are a team of technology and enthusiastic people, gigs basically, that are passionate about technology. We come from different backgrounds, scientific, engineering, computing backgrounds. And this team basically made it possible for our data center, for our computer center, to be known locally, known nationally, and known globally. We are listed on the top 500 sites since 1996, we have been awarded several awards. The first slide was a problem. The first slide was a challenge, the, the large challenge. This slide is actually the solution. If you have a problem, if you have a technical problem, and you want to fix it, the best way to fix it is by investing in people, investing in human resources. There is no technical challenge that is difficult if you have the right amount of people involved. <clears throat> so, let's get into the point. What is open source? Why we choose open source? I'm sure that in the last two days you have been presented with several uh, solutions. Uh, you, you already know what is open source. You know why people choose open source. And there are several reasons. And Mr. David Wheeler can, can tell you exactly in 174 pages why you need to choose open source by numbers. <laughs> Correct? Okay, but why we Saudi Aramco choose open source? Uh, I have gathered my team and uh, colleagues from different departments and asked them, if I want to deliver the message to this community, what should I say? And everybody agreed on this. Uh, this. First thing, we choose open source because of its performance. Okay, we do evaluation. We do a lot of evaluations every year. And the most thing important to us is performance. The second thing comes is that we have complex system. So when you have a complex system, you need the players to play together. Okay, so interoperability is uh, is a key factor. And if you look at these factors, you will find that the cost is also an issue, but it doesn't come first. <laughs> so why Linux? Why Linux and not another operating system? 
When I talk about another operating system, I don't mean the commercial operating system you are thinking of. Most likely you are thinking Apple, yeah? Uh, Apple or Microsoft Windows. Uh, Apple and Microsoft Windows at the time when, <coughs> when Linux HBC started, they cannot deliver. They cannot deliver because we required a multi-user, multitasking, real multi-user, multitasking operating system. Uh, we require GNU tools. We require GNU tools because we are porting software from, uh, from different Unix environment uh, to the environment that we want to use. Okay? And we require a high performance network stack because we are going to use several computers, as you will see later. And an I.O. stack. And at the time, the commercial products, the commodity commercial products cannot deliver. So how about other operating systems? How about open source operating system? like FreeBSD, why, ca why can't it deliver a good solution for us? Uh, let's talk about FreeBSD. It has the open source advantage. It is as popular as Linux. Some people will argue that the, basically the red little devil is as, com is as competent as the penguin. <coughs> it is flexible. What I mean by flexibility? I mean by flexibility is that I am able to customize it. I'm able to customize it. Uh, in, in, in supercomputing, and when it comes to real uh, high performance computing, you want to utilize every bit of the CPU. You want to utilize every bit of the memory. So you want to reduce the footprint of the, of the operating system and increase the footprint of the application. So FreeBSD, Linux, are flexible to do that. You can customize them. And even when you customize them, you don't break them. They are still mature. They are still stable. OK? Portable, the first platform support. You have NetBSD. NetBSD can actually, why it's called NetBSD? Because it's multi-platform support architecture. So why Linux then? Why we have chosen Linux? We have chosen Linux because at that time, uh, at that time, there was a license issue, BSD versus GBL. OK? And we chose Linux in Saudi Aramco because of recognition and commercial support. The mindset of our management requires that if you have an enterprise product, that you should have enterprise support for it. And Linux is the one that had enterprise support. NetBSD didn't have that at that time. OK, now it's time for the, the quick brief survey. The quick brief survey, where do we use open source in Saudi Aramco? We use it for, in four main areas. We use it in mission critical servers, in high performance computing, high availability computing also, scientific workstations, and in-house development. My friend Motluk yesterday presented, I believe, the in-house development and the mission critical server. So I'm going to go quickly over them. What is a mission critical server for us? A mission critical server is a server that runs a service that I depend on, no matter how small it is. A time server can be a mission critical server. A lookup server can be a mission critical server. If I depend on it to run my application, then I am, it is a mission critical server. So the, the first thing that I can think of as a mission critical server for high performance computer is lookup and directory services, NIS, DNS, LDAB, uh, Active Directory, not. OK, so this is one of the mission critical servers. The most important mission critical server that Saudi Aramco runs, actually, and it's one of the, like, maybe 50 sites around the world, is the uh, what they call maximum available, available architecture. This is something uh, commercial by Oracle, where you run Oracle database in a highly available active active. So you have two sites apart. Okay, and you run uh, database instances available on both sides. So if this site has a problem, the other site is still alive. Okay, and you can recover from it. If both sites are down, which shouldn't happen, which should never happen, you still have a disaster recovery site. So this is what we call maximum availability architecture. 
uh, this maximum availability architecture, if you look in Oracle white papers, you will find like 24 sites. <coughs> Most of these sites are actually